Hey everybody, Brian here uh, from Quantlabs.net. Just wanted to give you an overview of this, uh, what appears to be a pretty popular course. Uh, overview for your Python infrastructure building blocks. This is not going to be giving you an exact complete algo trading system or automated trading system, but it'll be damn close to give you just what it says here. The building blocks, the infrastructure, so you understand all the important components that go into a trading uh, system. So one of the things is in terms of requirements is uh, obviously I could have chosen any language and I've looked at over the last God knows how many years of what languages to work with. I'm not going to go into it why this language was that language but I will say about Python coming from a world of like zero knowledge and programming uh, Python's where you want to be. Uh, I've got confirmation from various sources down even in New York that a lot of firms are using Python. So even learning Python is a great uh, career move if you decide to go down this field in learning trading and something like Python. And again, Python's really a language that's actually teaching like 10 year olds on how to program. So if they're teaching 10 year olds on how to program, I don't know what's stopping you. So one of the things that uh, you want to know is you can get away with learning Python at the same time learning this, but there is you it is using the, the very popular packages of Pandas, Matplotlib, and NumPy. So you would want to make sure you have an understanding of that. The other thing is we, we, we use uh, Python 2.7 which is a much older version of Python, but it's stable. Uh, when you get into the Python 2 versus Python 3 debate, which I think that obviously the Python 2 debate's losing, a lot of Python 3 out there. Uh, when I tried to learn Python with Python 3, all I was getting a lot of compatibility problems when trying to install these packages, as I mentioned. So purpose uh, for, for, uh, for myself, my own sanity, I want to learn Python and not have to conflict with all these compatibility problems. That's why it took me many years to get into Python, but I'm glad I did a year ago. Um, but I did it hopefully the smart way by just following the path of 2.7. Though I don't think there'll ever be a 2.8, um, but 2.7 is a stable version. And once you understand that, and you're pretty comfortable with Python 3, whatever it is, 3, 5, 3, 6, whatever it's at, uh, then you move into Python. But if you're starting from the newbie beginning side, I would just stick with Python 2.7 for now. The particular version that I'm using is Python 2.713 or 714 uh, for this course for all the full compatibility of all these packages. So uh, knowing that if you decide to use uh, the interpreter of Python 3, you may get some of these uh, scripts that may break but just for warning you, if you stick with 2.714, you're okay. Okay, so let's talk about all that. So we've got everything divided up into nine modules. Now, uh, this I try to break down as simplistic as possible. Um, but what I've done here, the first two, actually the first three modules, is... Uh, the first overview is just a presentation on the different languages, uh, the pros and cons of each and why. And basically, uh, you'll see why I, I, I focus on Python, as I said earlier. Now, here we go into uh, the second module. Usually the one, um, if, you, if you are deciding to use, follow in the footsteps of the HFT guys like Citadel, to Sigma and whatnot, they're using Python extensively. They also use C++. But if you're just starting out, I just focus on Python for now. I think that's good enough as is. Um, and, uh, you know, some of my major scripts, I'm probably leaning towards 100% Python. And I'm not the only guy among my community I've talked that is doing the same. Um, you know, the nice thing about Python, it's open source. It's completely free. And, and it's, it's a very... Uh, it's just it's just a community of, of, of greatness. Uh, I've used products like 
MATLAB. And if you know me, I love MATLAB. I just don't want to have to keep spending money to keep up to date with MATLAB versus Python. So Python is it if you want to stay on the free side of things. But MATLAB's perfect. Actually, I'd say MATLAB's much better than Python, but that's if you're willing to pay for it. But if you're like me, who eats dog food for breakfast every day, ha ha ha, uh, you may want to just stick with Python. It's free. So then we talk about probably the hardest step I found was setting up the environment. Um, I'm using Mac OS for my environment. You can also use Linux, like the, the Ubuntu distribution of Linux, which is fairly easy. Um, and then just set up your, um, your uh, virtual environment if you choose to go down that path. I have had difficulties with Windows uh, with Python. Um, and it's just something I don't think Python's really built for Windows. So I've, I've purposely uh, strayed away from Windows and, and now the latest Windows 10. I'm not going to get here and bashing the Microsoft product and the, and the .NET. I've done that enough on my blog. <laughs> okay, so one of the most important aspects of, of a system is obviously databases. Uh, there's the movement of the traditional relationship ma uh, relationship management databases like MySQL, Postgres, now Maria, uh, and those are the open source ones which are free. You got the commercial ones like I don't know Oracle, SQL Server, whatever else. And then you have this new one, newer generation called NoSQL. I like NoSQL. It's lighter, it's faster, um, and you have different types of NoSQL databases. One of the ones that I have used in the past is um, the uh, MongoDB, and that's not bad. It's a document store, so you can put in just standard documentation and whatnot. But it's not a bad database. It's open source. It is fast. Blah, blah, blah. So I, I show you how to use that. And then my favorite database, which I absolutely love now with the new machine learning stuff that's coming out, is Redis. It's in memory and it's considered to be one of the fastest uh, databases out there. Uh, they're clocking in at something like 4 million transactions per second. And this database is, is true open source, meaning there's no freemium model to it. So it's not like you get this part of the database with the source code for free, but if you want this cool feature, you gotta pay for it. So they don't do that. With MongoDB, it's evolved into that, but uh, this is why I like my Redis. Um, and here's a lot of the uh, advantages. It's fairly popular, so there's that. So once we get out of that, we start looking at the brokers. Uh, the broker that I'm looking at for things like futures, pretty well universal asset classes is Interactive Brokers. I've got an entire uh, course on that. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, so this course right here, which I'll, I'll do another video on, the Interactive Brokers API, which I go into great, great detail with different languages, like C++, Java, I do that in this particular course, so you may want to check that out. But going back to this one for um, for interactive brokers, I do cover it with the Trader Workstation TWS with Python and some demos. So there's that. But if you want more detail with other languages, go to the other course on the IB Interactive Brokers API. All right. So we got that. Then we come into the next module, which is free market data. Now. Everyone's getting all excited about Yahoo Finance. It comes with a lot of limitations. Uh, one big example is that the servers from Yahoo will cut you off if you abuse the privilege of requesting data from it. Uh, so be aware of that, um, and they can ban you. Um, I was using this for my arbitrage pair trading strategy, uh, which I don't know what I'm doing with it, but uh, that's another story. Um, but uh, I'll be using this phase for that, uh, for some of the Python scripts. And a lot of that's actually used as part of my um, this analytics service. So I do use Yahoo Finance data under the right circumstances. So I show you how to do that. Other data sources that are really good, uh, the one I really like is IkeeFee, and then of course your broker data as well. Now the last part module here is to what I call pretty trading charts with Matt Plotlib. 
So we get that, and then we have the Pi QT chart, which is pretty good. At the time, that was a free open source charting package, but now apparently that's gone um, commercial. And then there's another one in here I've used as well. It's pretty cool. So I do cover other charting packages, which are not so popular in, 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 in or well known in Python, but I do cover them. And uh, that's pretty well it of all the major components of a basic algorithm trading system. Uh, and then if you wanted to automate, you could obviously use what you get out of um, this other course that uh, is the futures option. There are lots of stuff you can get out of that and even the source code on and apply them uh, to, to this course as well. Okay. And then if you decide to go into the more detailed, you can move into the interactive brokers API because that's pretty well uh, like a high percentage of uh, the people in my quant labs community and whatnot use interactive brokers. Okay, so that's pretty well it for the course. Um, let me know if you got any questions or whatnot. And if you want to get started, just get all your detailed information started out here. And you're on your way to learning how to build an algorithmic trading system. One of the big advantages with it is that you own the source code. You get to do what you want with the source code. And that is for yours forever. And you don't have to pay any new licensing fee or anything like that moving forward. So if you learn it, understand the underlying technology of it, you will do very well with Python and then advance to other languages like Java or, or C++ if you want. Hopefully this will help you out. And if so, let me know. I'll talk to you later. Bye.